Yes, so those ones have just joined in, you are welcome. And today we are going to look at the cathode ray oscilloscope. So previously we looked at how we can do an experiment to show that cathode rays travel in a straight line using the Maltese cross in a, in a cathode ray tube. We also looked at the properties of cathode rays and we say that cathode rays travel in a straight line. And we also say that cathode rays are negatively charged because they are electrons. We also say that cathode rays are deflected by electric and magnetic fields. We continue to say that cathode rays ionize air or gas molecules. They also cause fluorescence in some metals. They darken the photographic film and possess kinetic energy. We did not conclude there, but we said that also cathode rays produce X-rays when stopped by a heavy metal. So those were some of the properties of cathode rays. And these properties of cathode rays, at time T1 can ask you to write an experiment to verify one of those properties. For example, to show that cathode rays travel in a straight line. So there, what you have to do, you use a thermionic tube that has a magnetic cross. So cathode rays, as they come, they will hit the Maltese cross and they will form a shadow at the fluorescent screen. So the formation of the shadow indicates that cathode rays travel in a straight line. So it is also another uh, kind of phenomenon that we compare with light that travels in a straight line. The formation of shadows in light shows that light travels in a straight line. So also formation of a shadow, the Maltese shadow being formed on the screen shows that the cathode rays travel in a straight line. You can also be asked to show, uh, to do an experiment or to demonstrate using uh, an experiment to show that uh, cathode rays are deflected by electric fields or they are deflected by magnetic fields. So all these experiments can be asked. For electric fields, you have to get two plates inside the cathode ray and one plate is connected to the positive potential. So we shall see that cathode rays will be deflected towards the positive plate, indicating that these cathode rays which are negatively charged are always deflected by electric field. And also for the magnetic field to show that cathode rays travel in a, uh, cathode rays are deflected by magnetic field. Also that experiment can be asked for you to verify that uh, property. So there you must have a cathode ray tube and inside there, magnets, the North Pole and the South Pole. And the cathode ray is made to pass through the North, in between the North and the South. And we shall see that the cathode rays are deflected. Depending to the direction of the cathode rays, they will, they will be deflected to a certain pole. So we shall look at those experiments later on, but I want us today to go and to go ahead and look at the cathode ray tube. So in my right hand corner here, I've got a video playing from YouTube. Uh, it is from my home tuition uh, channel. Thanks very much. And this, uh, this video is going to help us to know First of all, what are the functions, all parts of this cathode ray uh, oscilloscope? And where is the cathode ray oscilloscope found? So looking at the notes, previously we said that the cathode ray tube has got three main parts. It has got the electron gun, it has the deflecting system, and it also has the fluorescent screen. All these three parts have a purpose. When we start with the electron gun, 
its main purpose is to produce, sorry, is to produce the cathode rays from the cathode and also to accelerate the cathode rays towards the fluorescent screen. So the electron grid, sorry, the electron gun has got very many components inside it. It has got the filament and the function of the filament is to heat the cathode. It has got the cathode and once this cathode is heated produces ele electrons. It has got the grid and this grid its purpose is to regulate the number of electrons which are being em emitted. We shall see the video and we shall see how the grid regulates the number of electrons that are being emitted. It has got the anode. The anode are made into two parts. So one anode, its purpose is to attract the electrons and the other one is to accelerate the electrons. So the anode is at a positive potential. Since it is at a positive potential, it attracts the electrons. And the second anode, its purpose will be the accelerating the electrons or the cathode rays towards the, the fluorescent screen. So those are some of the parts of the electron gun. And the other part is what we call the deflecting system. The deflecting system has got two main components. It, is, uh, it has the Y plates and it also has the X plates. As you hear the Y plates, their purpose is to deflect the electron beam vertically. And the X plates, their purpose is to deflect the electron beam horizontally. So both, both of these plates, we shall see, they can be connected to a DC voltage or to an AC voltage. And there's a way how the beam behaves when it reaches on the fluorescent screen. We shall see later. We shall see that later on when we are looking at the time base. The other third part of the cathode ray oscilloscope is what we call the fluorescent screen. The fluorescent screen. So the fluorescent screen, it is coated with zinc sulfide. And zinc sulfide has property that once light, once electrons hit it, it glows, it gives light. So for us to be able to observe the electron beam, the fluorescent screen has to be coated with zinc sulfide, such that if electrons strike the zinc sulfide or strike the fluorescent screen coated with zinc sulfide, we shall see a beam that is glowing. So the electron will glow. So I will not waste time after giving you some of these parts. Uh, the other thing that you shouldn't forget is that the cathode ray tube is evacuated to prevent interactions of the cathode rays or the electrons with the air molecules, such that the electrons do not lose their kinetic energy to the, such that electrons don't lose their kinetic energy to the air molecules. Because if there are interactions between the electrons and the air molecules, it means that these electrons that had their kinetic energy, they will lose that kinetic energy to the air particles or to the air molecules. And once they, use the, they lose their kinetic energy, just a few will be able to reach the fluorescent scre screen. So you can be asked a question, explain what happens if the cathode ray tube is filled with a gas or is filled with air. So you should note that, th that the intensity of the brightness on the fluorescent screen reduces. Reason is that a few number of electrons reach the fluorescent screen. Why? Because the electrons collided with the air molecules and they lost their kinetic energy. All right, so let us look at this video and we try to explain some of these parts. And later on, we shall go back to our, uh, we shall look at our notes. But everything that is here is what I've talked about. So let us see this video in animation and we try to see. Are you hearing what the gentleman is saying?
members, are you hearing what the gentleman is saying? Any mute, please? No. Okay, you can't hear. So I'll be explaining as he's also trying to explain. So, so there I was just telling you that there are three main components in a cathode ray tube, the electronic gun, deflecting plates, and the fluorescent screen. Okay, and that is the cathode ray tube. If you are told to do the cathode ray tube, I would expect this, or I would expect what appears in your notes. So it has got, the cathode ray oscilloscope has got what we call the filament. That filament which you are seeing there highlighted in yellow, it's the filament, and its purpose is to heat the cathode, the cathode, okay? So it has also got the cathode, and you should know that this cathode is connected to a negative potential. We call it negative potential, not terminal, but negative potential. Why is it connected to the negative potential? The purpose is that negatives are the ones that have electrons. So we want to fill this cathode plate with electrons. That's why it is called it is, it's connected to the negative poten potential. So once the cathode is heated, it will produce all, it will emit all those electrons that are embedded in it. Okay. So what are, if someone asks you, what is the function of the electron gun? Because we have seen that electron gun has got the cathode, the filament, has got the grid. This is what we call the grid. This is the two anodes. The two same anode is this one, which attracts the electrons. And this is the accepting. Which attracts the electrons. Which accesses the, the, the accepting towards the fluorescence. Which accesses the electrons towards the fluorescence. <laughs> So if someone asks you what is the what is the purpose of the grid, the purpose of the grid is to produce ele electrons. And these electrons will appear as an electron beam. The one that you are seeing in red, that's the electron beam from the cathode towards the person screen. Okay. Let us proceed. So this is the deflecting system. It has got two pairs, the Y plates and the X plates. So the Y plates will deflect vertically and this one horizontally. So this is what called a deflecting system. So the other one is the fluorescent screen. So it absorbs, it absorbs the energy of the cathode rays. And when it absorbs that energy, it will produce a bright spot. So that's why I told you that. That's why it is. That's why it has the zinc sulfide coated on it. Mm -hmm. So that is the. This is the filament now. It is made out of tungsten. Now the filament is made out of tungsten. Why is it made out of tungsten? Because tungsten has a high melting point. So however much you keep on heating tungsten with high voltage, it will not melt. The same filament that, that, that is used in bulbs is what we call the tungsten. Tungsten has a property that, that members are we together. Esther, are we together? Esther, are we together? Unmute, okay. You first unmute and hear each other a bit. Okay, tungsten has got a property that it has a high melting point. So high, high amounts of heat cannot melt tungsten. And that's why we use tungsten to heat the cathode, because it will take long for it to melt. It will not melt, actually. Okay. 
So what's the use of the cathode? The cathode is to release electrons when the filament hits it or when heated by the filament. Easy. Uh, we go to the next part. The next part is the grid. Teacher. Um, yes. They are said to release. So release is the same as emit. Yes, it's the same. I'll take okay. you back. So it releases the electrons or it emits electrons when it is heated. Then the other one is the grid. The grid is connected to the negative potential. Are we together? It's connected to the negative potential. Why is it connected to the negative potential? Is that we want to regulate on the a number of electrons which are being emi emitted. So they are saying number two, how does it regulate? It's a question that they ask in your YNAB examination. How does the grid regulate the number of electrons emitted from the cathode? So the answer is on number two. So they are saying that the more negative this potential, the more electrons will be repelled from the grid and fewer electrons will reach the anode and the screen. What does this gentleman mean? So what he means that if the cathode has started producing electrons, are we together? And also the grid is negative. Remember, remember that the electrons are negative, the electrons are negatively charged. So if they make the grid to be more negative, more negative, it means that the electrons which are being emitted from the cathode will be repelled back, back to that cathode by the grid. Why? Because the grid is ne negative. And you show that since electrons are negative and the grid is negative, so negative charges are going to repair, to repair. There will be a repulsion. So the grid will be made negative and it will repair the negative charges or the negative electrons that are being emitted from the cathode. This will make some of the electrons to bounce back, back into the cathode. Now, that's when we want to reduce on the number of electrons which are being emitted from the ca cathode. For us to reduce on the number of electrons that are being emitted from the cathode, we increase on the negative potential of the grid. The grid becomes more negative. If the grid becomes more negative, more, sorry, less electrons will be emitted from the cathode. It means that the electrons that are being emitted from the cathode will bounce back, will bounce back into the ca cathode and just a few will be allowed to go through. Now, if we want high number of electrons to be emitted from the cathode, then we have to reduce on the negativity, on the negative potential of the grid. So the grid is made in the such a way that its negativity, the potential, the negative potential of the grid can be reduced or can be increased. So once you reduce on the negative potential of the grid, it means that now more electrons can pass through the grid because its negativity has been reduced. So just a few will be repelled and this will allow more electrons to be emitted from the ca cathode. So that's what they are saying that the more negative the poten the more neg the more negative this potential, the more electrons will be repelled from the grid and few electrons will reach the anode and the screen. Members, are we together? I want someone to ask me a question about that if there is, if you need clarification of that. Any question? How does a grid, how does the grid regulate the number of electrons emitted? Then you should write this. Right? That when that 
negative potential of the grid is increased, more electrons will be repelled back to the cathode and a few will be emitted from the ca cathode. Sorry, and a few will reach the screen and a few will reach the anode and the screen. I repeat that. The more negative, eh? the more negative, the more negative the potential of the grid altogether, more electrons will be repelled back to the cathode and a few electrons will reach the anode and the screen. And the less negative the potential of the grid, more electrons will be uh, will be allowed to reach the anode and the and the screen. So that's what you have to know that the grid you can regulate it by reducing on its negative potential. They're also saying that the number of electrons reaching the screen determines the brightness of, of light. If we have more electrons reaching the screen, then the, the brighter the spot. If we have less electrons reaching the screen, then that uh, let me say that dimmer the spot. So hence negative potential of the grid can be used as a bright control. So the grid is the one that controls the brightness on the screen. Uh, Some time back we had these TVs. I don't know whether you, ha you have ever seen them. Uh, these Sierra or TVs, these big ones that have a stomach. Have you ever seen them? We were born in 21st yeah. century where you have flat screens. Uh, but those screens, they use, they use a cathode ray. The screens, they use a cathode ray uh, oscilloscope such that whenever I want to increase on the brightness, there is a knob that you have to turn. And with that knob, <laughs> whenever you turn it, you are, you are regulating the amount of electrons that are reaching the what? The screen. So if you want to increase on the brightness, you turn that knob. But what is happening inside is that the knob is connected to the grid. And if you want to increase on the brightness, that means that you, you have to reduce on the negative potential of the, grid, of the grid, such that more electrons are allowed to reach the anode and the screen and the screen. Cynthia, are we okay? Cynthia has gone for lunch. Okay. Cynthia, are you there? You have turned off. Everyone has turned off. Hope you are listening. Yes, teacher. Are you listening? Everyone is listening. Yes. Okay, let us proceed. Okay. Teacher. Yes. Yeah, first, first tell me the difference between focusing node and accelerating Wait, node. Okay, now the difference is here to the bottom. Are you seeing? So the focusing node, its purpose is, uh, let me try to play this video. Play it and then you watch, just watch. So what's the purpose? What's the purpose of the focusing node? Uh -huh. So this is the focusing anode. Its purpose is to focus the cathode rays. Are we together? Its purpose is to focus the cathode rays. Then the accelerating anode, accelerating anode, its purpose is to accelerate the electrons. Now, this gentleman is trying to show you that when electrons are being produced from here, eh, they try to move in that direction. You see those blue lines? They try to move in that direction. But on reaching, on reaching the focusing anode, what will happen is that, what will happen is that they will be focused through the anode. And now they will be focused on the screen. 
So without the focusing anode, the electrons will go astray. They will spray within this tube. So the focusing anode, what it will do is that it will concentrate those electrons onto one spot, onto one spot, which is on the screen, which is on the screen. And then the other accelerating anode, its purpose is to accelerate those electrons. You can see that from this point up to this point, there are only plates which are deflecting. So this accelerating anode will def try to deflect, will try to accelerate the electron beam towards the screen, towards the screen. Okay, we all know the meaning of the word to accelerate. Teacher. Yes. How are the electrons able to move from a positive from a positive to a positive? Because the focusing anode is positive and the accelerating anode is positive. Are they as the as the electrons able to move? Okay. Thank you very much. Now, what you should know is that the focusing anode, uh, the way it is made is that its purpose is to attract those electrons that are being emitted. It attracts them because you should know that it is also at a positive potential. That's what they are saying. The anode is at a positive potential. So if the anode is at a positive potential, it will attract the electrons because electrons are negatively charged. And we know that like unlike charges do what? Do attract. So the electrons will be attracted towards the anode. But the first anode which is there is to focus the electrons. Now, the whole of this anode, when, uh, the whole of this anode is having a positive potential, which is good because the electrons are negatively charged. So the electrons will be attracted faster to the first anode and also to the second anode. Why? Because the first and the second anode, both of them are, are having a positive poten potential. So they will attract the electrons and the electrons will now be accelerated by the accelerating anode and they will move through the deflecting system and they will reach the screen and we shall observe them as a bright what? As a bright spot. So they can move from one positive anode to another positive positive anode because the electrons are negatively charged and are always attracted by the positive terminals. So the positive terminals which are here are the focusing anode and also the accelerating anode. Okay, hope I've answered you. Now we go to the next one. Uh, So we shall see it as a bright spot there. Now let us move to the to the Y plates. So the Y plates they are placed in this order. Mm -hmm. One is up, another one is at the bottom. The purpose is that they want this, uh, they want the electron beam to be deflected vertically such that when it comes, uh, it is deflected either up or where or down. So the white plates cause deflection in the vertical direction when the voltage is applied across them. So there is always a voltage that must be applied on them for us to have that deflection. Are we together? That takes you back to the property that cathode rays are deflected by electric fields. Because if we have uh, a potential applied to these members, when I talk about potential, I'm meaning that one plate is connected to the positive and another plate is connected to the ne negative. That's what I'm saying. So there is a potential, we call it potential difference. There's a potential in between these two plates. So it means that now the electron is going to move through an electric field in between these two plates. So it, it will depend on the magnitude of that, dif of that electric field and the electron beam will be deflected either vertically or either upwards or downwards. So it depends on the amount of the electric field that will be in between those two plates or on which plate have we put the potential on. Huh? Members are we together. If we put the positive potential on the upper plate, so we may expect that we may expect the uh, the electron beam to be deflected 
upwards. Because if you put positive here and the electrons are negative, so electrons will go where the positive is. And you shall have the spot somewhere here. We are going to see this video and I'm going to show you inside what happens to the deflecting system. Then the other one is the X what? Is the X plates. X plates. Uh, let's go to the X plates. So the, the X plates will deflect the beam left or what? The X plates will deflect the beam left or right, left or right. That's what will happen. So even this one deflect if there is a potential that is connected on the plates. So one plate can be having positive, another one can be having a negative. So the way they will, they will deflect will depend on the potential that is on, on one plate or the other. Uh, so, Kawami, you are not getting me. Okay, let, let, let me try. If I'm not getting me, I'll fix it. So that's 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 the uh, that's how a surface screen, and a fluorescent screen is coated with zinc sulfide or graphite. Graphite, you can have zinc sulfide or graphite. So also graphite will glow if electrons uh, strike it, and you shall have a bright spot. A bright spot. Okay, so that is it there. Now there is something that uh, I want us to see after that, but let me first uh, let me first do some in the video here. Increase on my okay. I think uh, I'm loud. I think I'm loud and clear. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm loud and clear. So, so members, uh, read through these notes. Everything that we have explained about the cathode ray tube in the video, they are the ones that appear in these notes. And now, let us look at the time based switch. We have only two minutes remaining. So, before I go to the time based switch, let me first invite questions. Because under time-based switch, that's when we shall look at the deflecting system there, how the, how the deflecting system works. We shall see the deflecting system, how it works. So any question? Leticia, do you have any question? No, I don't have. OK, should I start firing you questions? Yes. OK, now let me ask. One question, what's the purpose of the grid? The grid, put up your hand and give me the answer. What's the use of the grid? What's the use of the grid? What's the use of the grid? Yes, Esther. It controls the number of electrons reaching the android. Anode. Yes, it controls the number of electrons reaching the anode or someone who is wiser than that. I know you are very wise. <laughs> Sometimes Mr. Watamon says, oh, which food have you eaten in the morning? <laughs> so <laughs> I know. <laughs> so you should know that it controls the number of electrons uh, reaching the screen. And that means that it controls the bra the brightness, isn't it? So it controls the brightness of the electron beam on the screen by controlling the number of electrons or by regulating the number of electrons that are reaching the screen. Okay, that's question one. Question two, who can give me, uh, how does the grid regulate the number of electrons? How does the grid regulate the number of electrons? We have less than one minute. 
how does greed just to see someone who knows the answer uh put up your hand how does the grid regulate the number of electrons okay so when we come back we shall start with that question esther you have the answer i'm like maybe it's because it's at a negative potential all right that is correct that is true but uh, we have we have